Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm on the street, and today I am once again using my webcam. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm on the street, and today I am once again using my webcam. That is because this series is going to take place on my computer. It's going to be a series of screencasts in which I show you guys how to use the different Linux desktop environments, at least the different major Linux desktop environments. And I was writing an article for English the other day, um, and it's on my website, tech.nerdonthestreet.com. It was about Windows versus Linux, and basically why you should be using Linux instead of Windows. I have talked about that before, you already know all of that. Um, well, in that article, I included a screenshot of Windows and a screenshot of Linux for comparison. And I realized that, to me, both of them looked, you know, I know how to use Windows and I know how to use GNOME 3. So it's like I, I can visualize how both of them work, obviously. But for someone who's never used Linux before, I realized that just looking at a screenshot of, say, GNOME 3, really you might not have any idea how how it works what am i supposed to click here to get to the menus how am i supposed to launch programs here um, kde is a bit easier because it's more like like windows but yeah i kinda also at the same time needed some videos to do cuz i'm not saying i'm running out of video ideas or anything i'm just saying that you know Tech companies haven't made too many announcements recently. I didn't want to do any more Apple videos because I've done a lot of Lowe's recently. Um, and since I got my Mac, I've kind of been... The Mac OS is great. Don't get me wrong. Mac OS is great. I've just been getting bored of um, not installing something new every, every week. I will show you guys um, GNOME 3, KDE... LXDE and XFCE. So those are the four, they used to be the four major ones anyway. In addition to those four, I will also be going, showing you guys uh, Unity, which is what Ubuntu comes with. And I will be showing you, what are the two ones that, that Linux Mint Desktop gives you? Cinnamon and Mate. So I'll be showing you guys all of those and yeah, um, if there's any other environments that you want to know how to use that you've seen screenshots of, maybe Enlightenment or something, then yeah, let me know and I will definitely make a video because these are pretty easy videos to make. I, and if you've already used a desktop environment, one of these desktop environments before, then don't bother watching these because I'm going to get a comment from someone Duh, that's how you use the desktop environment. Uh, yes, it is a duh thing. But for a lot of people who aren't willing to install stuff on a whim, um, it's important to see how things work before you install them. Um, before you even consider installing them. So, yeah. Once again, this is not for experienced users. This is for people who have never used Linux before, who have never seen Linux in use before, and are just confused about how some of the different desktop environments work. And yeah, any of these desktop environments theoretically can be installed on any Linux distribution. This video, this intro is getting a little long. It's been like five minutes now. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I will start the first um, environment that I am showing you how to use, GNOME 3. Alright guys, so here we are. I have just installed Ubuntu GNOME. Uh, be warned, this is already going slower, um, just like last time, it is going kind of slow. Once again, it does not go that slow normally. It is that slow because I am, first of all, in VirtualBox, which slows it down in itself. Also, I am screen recording, which also slows it down. And, you know, I'm also audio recording at the same time. Um, so, yeah, we will have the same old mouse integration, but yeah, it will not be this slow normally. As you can see... Um, we have installed Ubuntu. I'll be using Ubuntu for the series just because it's easy to install, quick to install, and there's pretty much a, um, like it, all desktop environments are available for Ubuntu, for the most part. Um, so yeah, it says Ubuntu here, but, but what we're seeing right now 
is not um, Ubuntu specific. Uh, I have installed Ubuntu GNOME, which I think should be called Gubuntu, but whatever. Um, and Ubuntu GNOME is just the plain old GNOME desktop environment. So if you install the GNOME desktop environment, you turn your computer on, this is what you'll see. You'll see a clock at the top, um, you know, power button, and this is what the login screen looks like for GNOME. And as soon as I can get my mouse up here, there we go, you just click on your name, put in your password, enter, and then we log in. As you can see, we are now logged into GNOME, and it might not look like it's done loading. You might not be sure if it's done loading or not, but it is. You'll notice there's nothing at the bottom. Um, as you can see, when we bring our mouse to the bottom, that little, this thing kind of pops up. Um, and that is basically like a notification center. Whenever you get notifications, like whenever you get an IM or an email or um, I'm trying to think of an example that people actually still use. Whenever you get a notification, it'll be in this bar down here. Um, basically, if you're from Windows, you're going to be looking from a start menu, or you're going to be looking for a start menu. Um, so where's your start menu? Well, in GNOME, your start menu is this activities button. You have got two options. You can click the activities button, and that will open up the activities menu. At least it should. Okay. Oh, yep, it did. Just a little slow. So yeah, you can either do that, or you can just... This is what I do. It might seem like kind of tiring clicking on that all the time. So what you can do is just bring your mouse to the top left. When you bring your mouse to the top left, that little wave thing comes out, and it opens the activities menu. So this is your start menu, your sort of start screen for GNOME 3. Um, things are a little bit spread out, but, you know, that's a matter of opinion. As you can see, on the right side we have virtual desktops, which I will show you about in a moment. On the left side, this is your favorites, um, your favorite applications. So basically, this is um, your dock. This is like a dock on the left here. And sorry about that. Like I said, mouse is going kind of slow. At the top here we've got search. And you can just start typing to search, like Firefox, and Firefox comes up. We're going to click show all applications here, and that opens up our applications menu. So, as you can see, we've got, um, yeah, lots of applications, and it sorts them into groups, of course. Um, right now, we're scrolling through all our applications, but you can say, all right, I want to look at games, or um, internet, and yeah, um, the applications that come with Linux will vary but this is what your applications menu will look like like I said um, for the most part all desktop environments can be installed on any Linux distribution so yeah let's say we want to open our files so we open that up okay I, no it's open yeah like I said it is not normally this slow um, so we open files and it comes up on the desktop and normally that would have taken like you know, that that would have been instant normally. That you, it's just, like I said, slow. Um, so yeah, as you can see, when you're in GNOME 3, whatever application you're currently in is up here, files. Now, let's say I want to open Firefox, which was probably a bad idea because that's kind of heavy compared to files. As you can see, though, this is not a list of open programs here. This is only saying whatever program you have selected right now. Um, and you can click on that to get some options, like if we go back to files, then we can click on files and we can do new window. So um, this application thing here is kind of your file menu. Um, as you saw, like I just did, if you need to switch, oh, we just got a notification. So you can see it appeared at the bottom of the screen. And um, yeah, as you can see, notification center, like I said. So. Let's say you have two applications open, you want to switch between them. Um, what you do is you just go to your activities menu, and that will open the activities menu, and every open window or every open program will appear. Um, work with me here. Mouse is going slowly. Like I said, not normally that slow. Um, software updater. All right. Yeah. Like I said, we're in VirtualBox for the hundredth time. 
Now, let's say I don't want to keep going back and forth between um, my Firefox and files like this, and I just want to focus on one thing at a time. That is when Virtual Desktops comes in. And if you don't know what Virtual Desktops is, hopefully you'll get it, but I know plenty of people already know what Virtual Desktops is, so they'll understand this. Um, when we opened up things in our first desktop here, a second desktop automatically appeared. I absolutely love GNOME's automatic virtual desktop sorting systems and everything. Some people like to configure it manually. I like the way GNOME 3 does it. But as you can see, we can drag Firefox. We just dragged Firefox into its own desktop. So now we've got three desktops. Now we've got this is our um, our files, and then we can go over to our Firefox desktop, and these are just different desktops. We can have more than one thing open in one desktop. Let's say over in files, um, let's say I want to make a text document, so I'm going to open up maybe gedit, which is GNOME's file editing program, <coughs> or a text editing program, and it's, it's like Notepad for Windows. It's not supposed to be a word replacement, it's supposed to be a Notepad replacement. So yeah, as you can see, I'm typing away here, and then I want to go look something up, so I switch desktops and go whoop, over to Firefox. And like I said, once again, this is going slower than it normally would be. So yeah, that is the Virtual Desktop Manager. It always adds one free virtual desktop uh, aside from the other ones, and you can, can drag, I think you can drag virtual desktops around. Um, but as you can see, when we dragged Firefox back into there, it closed the extra virtual desktop because it only keeps one extra open at a time. So, some other things you'll notice. Oh, by the way, when you open the Activities menu, it opens the Notification Center at the bottom. Just saying. Um, some other things you can see from the desktop, and you can get to everything at the top bar from the Activities menu. But we've got a clock, which the clock looks, I mean, it's in the middle of the screen, and basically it's a clock and calendar. And the clock always works fine. The only problem I have with the calendar is that the calendar only works with, I think it's like evolution. Yeah, calendar only works with evolution. So if you're using another program for your calendar, then it might, or then it won't work with, with GNOME's calendar. You have to use the evolution calendar program if you want your calendar events to appear in um, to appear in the system thing here. Um, however, I think you might be able to add your Google account or something. We'll take a look in a minute. Um, over here, we look at you've got accessibility settings, and these are I think default things in GNOME 3. Turn that off. As you can see, GNOME rather than check marks. Um, GNOME does use the on-off switches, kind of like Mac OS and iOS do. Uh, you've got volume, which volume slider, and then sound settings, nothing big. Um, network manager. On the very right, you've got your user thing. And that will be your... You go here to log out, to power off. Um, you can get to your settings from here. And really, this top bar is kind of like Mac OS, at least the right part is kind of like Mac OS's notification area and, you know, login menu. Um, you can turn notifications on or off. If you choose to log into, like, your instant messaging program, then you can change your status to online or away or something here. I don't think Skype works with that. Um, but, yeah. Um, do you want to really quick... This is GNOME's settings panel, and GNOME is kind of, it's kind of controversial what they've been doing. Um, GNOME used to be, like, really tweakable. Like, they weren't super tweakable, but they used to be more tweakable than this. GNOME has really taken the simplicity approach. Um, the idea that they know how to make things more simple than people do. So they removed a lot, a lot of um, options. As you can see, like, desktop background. I clicked on the background setting, and there wasn't really a menu there. There's not something that says select your desktop background. If you want to change it, you have to know what to do. You have to know to click on that, which is not that hard to figure out. But, like, you have to know, okay, I need to click on the background to change it. 
Um, so, yeah, and Gnome's kind of like that. You have to know how to use Gnome. It's easy to learn, but you have to learn. Um, so Gnome 3 might not be a great idea for people who are not adept to learning, but like I said, it's nothing complicated. You don't need to be, like, technically inclined. So, brightness and lock, you can choose to lock the screen, turn the screen off after a certain amount of time. So, Gnome, you can add your Google account, Facebook account, Windows Live, Exchange, um, and yeah, Ubuntu adds some some there, but I, I believe at least Facebook and Google should be on every GNOME installation. Um, so yeah, region and language, you've got some basic other settings like displays. So yeah, as you can see in GNOME 3, there is no minimize button. Basically the idea is you don't need to minimize things to the taskbar, because if you need to like put this off to the side, you can just open a new virtual desktop. Um, and in my experience, that's been true. When you've got unlimited virtual desktops, or at least, you know, a sufficient amount of virtual desktops, why do you really need to minimize something? Just drag it into a virtual desktop, or switch to another virtual desktop, and then do whatever you were going to do before you minimized it. It's definitely different, but, you know, just something to think about. There's also no maximize. This is the default theme. Um, we can go, actually I don't think that you can change too much about, about the theme anymore. Um, but, yeah, yeah, you can't change too much about the theme. So, that's what the top bar looks like, and then yeah, there, all there is is an X, and is a, it is at the top right. thought it was at the top left, but apparently it's at the top right, which is fine. Um, so yeah, there's not a whole lot else to this. Uh, I showed you how to open things and change virtual desktops. So I'll see how this video goes, and the next one I make will be KDE if I do decide to make another one. So yeah, like I said, this is not something for like um, people who have already used Linux. This is for literally people who have never used Linux before. Um, hope that helped at least one person out there in the world. Let me know uh, what you thought, if you have any suggestions, things I should do or show you. So yeah, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm on the street, and I will see you later. See ya.